Hi, welcome back and thanks for watching again. Um, today's video is just going to be a fun comparison um, that I wanted to do uh, mostly just for my own interest but I thought you all would be interested to join along um, with the experiment and see what comes out of it. Um, so we have about I think it was nine diodes. They're all Japanese diodes, um, new old stock germanium diodes by different manufacturers and they all have different parts numbers. Um, and I measured the forward voltages and even when I took the average um, they were all kind of spread out all over the place um, and so that's a good sort of set of uh, variations within what would be just germanium diodes I think it was about a year ago I made a video um, comparing germanium diodes and silicon diodes and LEDs um, and matching their forward voltages by putting a bunch of them in series to see if there was a difference in tone based on what the diode was made of. Um, and I think the general consensus and also my uh, personal um, impression was that germanium did sound different than silicon. And I think a lot of people uh, preferred the germanium because of its softer edge and the way it sort of um, didn't have that harsh clipping sound to it. Uh, so I wanted to try to see if there was any difference um, amongst germanium diodes. Uh, I think we all know the famous story about the clown and that it had these mythical, I don't know if they call it mythical, but it had these specific diodes in the original clown and without those diodes the pedal wouldn't sound the same. Anyway, uh, so if there is such a claim that it has to be this specific diode even if it's uh, a germanium diode then there should be some tonal variation within uh, all these nine germanium diodes that I have. And like I said, they're made by different manufacturers, they have different forward voltages. Different manufacturers would mean different um, manufacturing processes. And so there should be some tonal difference if, in fact, there is a difference. So um, I was just curious to see if there would be any difference. Um, and so I have a bunch of loops. Uh, I'll explain uh, what we did to the circuit after this and so we'll go through the circuit and uh, talk about what I did to test these diodes and then after that we'll go into a bunch of different loops played back to back through all the nine different diodes and one fun thing that I want to do is I want you all to vote in the comment section um, if you had a favorite diode or if you thought there was absolutely no difference between any of these um, so at the end of the shootout I'll have all the diodes listed and um, a corresponding number to them or uh, just if you think that they all sound the same you can just write that in there as well um, so I thought that would be a fun uh, vote to to cast in the comment section so I hope you all can play along with that as well um, but anyway so let's go into the video um, and we'll first talk about the circuit and what we're going to do to make to test these diodes uh, so thanks for watching and uh, hope you enjoy the video Okay, so we're now taking a look at the schematic for the breadboard overdrive that we built. Um, and the first thing I want to do is remove these two diodes. Um, these diodes were there for the soft clipping of the first op amp. And since we're going to be testing our diodes today um, using hard clipping, we're going to remove those and just use the first op amp as a pure gain stage. Although it will change the frequency response a little bit and shape the tone. Um, there will be no clipping in the op amp. And the next thing I want to do is to take this end of this capacitor and I want to jumper this whole second op amp stage and the tone stack and then connect this capacitor to this output um, right before it goes into the trim pot for the tone knob. Um, and by doing that, uh, what I want to do is I want to find the gain knob setting where there is no clipping in the first op amp and so we're going to do that right after this um, I'm going to jumper this whole section like I said and connect this capacitor to this point in the schematic or in the circuit and we'll play around with the gain knob and try to find a sweet spot right before it goes into breakup so let's try that now okay so we're taking a look at the breadboard overdrive um, and I've already rewired uh, the breadboard so that um, as I explained earlier, the capacitor, this is actually the output capacitor that goes straight to the output volume trim pot, which is right here. 
um, and this is going straight to the output of the first op amp um, and so I've already rewired it just the way I explained um, in the schematic earlier and the gain knob is at noon and so let's start with this um, and see how it sounds I'm on the neck pickup Okay, so um, you can definitely hear the breakup of the op amp and it sounds uh, pretty bright and that's because it's not going through the tone knob um, and so the tone would be cutting the tone knob would be cutting off a little bit of the higher frequencies but um, because it's not going through that it sounds pretty bright as it is right now. Um, anyway, uh, let's just for fun uh, let's max out the gain and hear how it sounds but um, we're not interested in uh, doing that for the most part today, but let's just do it for fun. So you can definitely hear um, the op amp breakup. Um, it's not the most pleasant of overdrive tones um, and it sounds uh, almost a little bit fuzz like uh, but that is just pure op amp breakup with no diodes involved at all. Um, anyway so let's lower the gain knob and try to find that spot where it's pretty much clean. Okay, so I'd say right around there, um, what is that, like 9.30, uh, almost 10 o'clock, not quite. I think that's uh, a good point where you have relatively good volume, but the op amp is pretty much clean. Um, and just for comparison, uh, let's do a direct clean tone bypassing the whole breadboard altogether. Okay, and so still on the neck pickup. Okay, so I think it sounds pretty close. Um, you're definitely going to hear a lot more low end with the bypass tone because um, this is the full frequency of the guitar. Whereas um, earlier when we were going through the op amp, although it was clean, it was still going through the op amp and the tone shaping um, within the op amp where it's cutting off a lot of the low frequencies. Um, and it should be cutting off a lot of treble as well if it were to go through the tone knob but since it's not what we had earlier um, is just the first op amp cutting off a low end but all the treble still coming through because it's not going through the tone knob. Uh, anyway uh, let's go on to the next part and I'll explain what we'll do to make this into a hard clipping overdrive. Okay so now that we found um, the setting on the gain knob where the op amp isn't clipping or maybe just barely barely clipping um, we're going to go into the next stage which is to make this into a hard clipping overdrive and so if you follow along um, in the previous breadboard build and build to your own breadboard overdrive uh, this is all that you have to do so I marked the spots in red that you have to change and that's it um, basically so we remove the two diodes in the feedback loop to get rid of the soft clipping um, and all we're going to do is add a 1k resistor right after the output of the first op amp and then have two back-to-back -back diodes right after that 
Um, and this has to go to reference voltage, not to ground, but to reference voltage. Um, so be sure to do that. And that's pretty much it. Um, and then it's going to go through the tone knob and then the second op amp stage and then to output. Um, and the second op amp stage works great in this case because the germanium diodes are going to clip the signal so much that it's going to be very quiet um, coming right off of the tone knob. And by having the second op amp sort of boost the signal back up to a reasonable level, we're going to be able to hear it. Uh, so as we'll see later, um, it's not going to be a really quiet sounding overdrive. It's going to have um, not a whole lot of volume, but it's going to have a decent amount of volume that you won't notice any tone sucking. And so let's go on to the breadboard and do that modification. So I've now wired the breadboard so that it is um, a hard clipping overdrive. And this is the 1K resistor that we talked about earlier. And these are the two germanium diodes. Um, for now, I have the 1N34s in there. Um, and so let's just see how it sounds with the gain at the 930 position. Um, still on my neck pickup. And so you can definitely hear that germanium um, soft sort of crunchy but a little bit mushy. Um, I know these words are really hard to explain in overdrive tone but it has a spongy softness to it um, that's I think unique to germanium clipping. Um, and so let's turn up the gain knob and we would be introducing op amp clipping uh, but following the op amp clipping, the signal is going to go through the germanium diodes, which is going to soften that harshness that the op amp clipping had. And so you can definitely hear that it sounds a lot different from um, when we had just the op amp earlier and we listened to just the op amp clipping um, as we cranked the gain knob. So the germanium diodes definitely do a lot of softening of the harsh op amp clipping and it's probably going to be similar uh, with silicon diodes as well um, and so that's why a lot of the hard clipping circuits um, like the DS1 or the RAT or uh, the DOD250, any of those, um, you're actually cranking the gain uh, so much that you are clipping the op amp itself. But because we have clipping diodes um, after that, you do sort of soften up a little bit of that harshness that comes with op amp clipping. Um, and so with the germanium diodes coming after the op amp, um, it doesn't sound as bad at all. It actually sounds pretty good. For today, we're going to compare, um, we're going to try to compare just the germanium tones, and so we're going to go back to that 930 position just to keep the op amp clean so we know that we're only getting the germanium diodes clipping the signal. Um, so let's go back to that. And so from here, um, we're just going to listen to all the different diodes. Uh, played back to back with a bunch of different loops um, and have really short loops so that um, our ears don't sort of lose the tone or forget the tone that came before it. Because the difference is so subtle or non-existent, um, I try to, to make the loops so that they really show off the tones but are short enough that you kind of remember what came before it. I think I have nine diode pairs. Um, and we'll listen to those back to back playing through different loops and that's about it so uh, yeah let's just go on into the comparison <laughs> 